UN predicts that by 2050, there'll be more population, but not enough food based on our current standards. That's why Singapore's government is also taking a stance on that. You know, we'll be self-reliant on food uh, by that time it comes. Maybe you can actually open it up to take a smell. It's not pungent at all. I was exploring plant-based options, but plant-based options did not come across as being very environmentally sustainable. Plant-based options actually have to go through a very extensive uh, processing in terms of isolating the protein. While the rest of the plants is either uh, put back into the system as feed to other animals or they end up in landfills. That's when I came across uh, insects. We find crickets are actually very nutrient dense. Almost 50% of it was made of proteins and about 20% fat. How does that compare to our normal wheat flour? So wheat flour has only about 11% protein and very little fat. We don't have any hard and fast data on 100% insect protein being eaten day in and day out. We don't know what is the long-term consequence. What you see here that is being suspended are the wet biomass, and these are all microalgae. What we'll do is to harvest all this uh, wet biomass microalgae to be then processed into our food raw material later on. Tastes like noodles, like very tasty noodles. There's a nice bite to it as well. And I'm going back for more. <laughs> <laughs> Humans have really been eating algae products. Look at seaweed, for example. Anything that is smaller in size, you know, these microorganisms are classified as microalgae. We eat animals that are caught in the wild, for example, fish. And the fish will feed on this microorganism. So why not we go direct to the food chain itself? Tofu producers are now discarding this as a byproduct. Okay, but to you, this is your source material. Yes, <laughs> it's my gold mine. So during the tofu production, two byproducts are generated: soybean pulp. The second byproduct is called a soy whey, a liquid byproduct. So what we are doing over here is that take the soy whey and convert it into alcoholic beverage. Soy whey itself actually contains nutrients. So if you actually dispose soy whey into the drainage without any processing, it can result in water pollution in the long run. If it's not utilised, then you need to spend energy and resources to, to process the soy whey before disposal. Yes, why not convert this byproduct into a consumer beverage? So after fermentation process, we now need to centrifuge the yeast away from the product that you want. It will become a clear product as you can see over here. So the alcohol percentage for this drink is about 7%, which is similar to Moscato. There's incredible amount of venture capital coming into food technology. These are exciting times. No parallel in human history. But at the same time, we're trying to ask the question, what are the health benefits? If they are good, bravo. 